Hey guys, welcome back to another YouTube video here. My name is Nick. I talk all about trading and investing. And today we're talking about EU. Now, if you guys were watching the channel in 2020, uh, unless you're new to the channel, I guess you probably saw me ranting about uh, all the bullishness on Euro USD. And it was actually one of my top pairs of 2020, just because this thing trended so nicely and went very well with my bearish overall thesis on the US dollar last year. Now, uh, with that said, Today is actually kind of a fun one because today is kind of the first time we're going to be using the A1 dashboard or the A1 trading dashboard uh, to kind of spot some setups here. I'm going to ignore my handwriting because it's terrible. But um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys a little bit of the analysis that I did with this uh, this tool that's in beta mode. And before I get too far, if you do want access to this tool, it's gonna be going out to our newsletter subscribers first. We're gonna do some early access for them, as well as of course, our A1 Trading members will hear about ways to get this once uh, version one f officially releases. We're hoping to do it in the next few days, but I'm currently just kind of testing it and running on my own to see how things are working, look for bugs, that sort of stuff, before we release it to the public. So if you want access, there will be information about how to get access to to this MT4 tool in our newsletter. Without further ado, let's talk about Euro dollar. Okay, so I'm long on Euro dollar right now. Not a huge position. Again, like I said, this week I've been kind of, I'm still, of course, looking at my trading, but I've been really focused on just getting this tool finished and making sure everything works the way it should. Uh, but with that said, uh, I've got this key. We're on the, the scanners tab right here, and we're looking at the show pullback zone. Uh, uh, tool right now or the feature that is currently set to on. Now, of course, I could turn other things on here. We could take a look at, uh, for example, bullish RSI divergence, bullish and bearish, right? There's some, some bearish uh, RSI divergence. Now, um, I will say just from my own personal trading style, generally, I'm going to ignore bearish signals in a strong uptrend, and I'm going to look only for bullish ones. So in that case, I'd be turning on things like the bullish pivots, right? And it gives me some good pivot areas on the daily chart to look at for potential support. Um, and then of course, we've got the the bearish pivots if you want them. But again, like I said, not so interested in bearish signals in an uptrend. Um, and then I guess those are the only ones that I want right now. I could turn on the bullish and uh, bullish engulfing and pivots, uh, sorry, pin, uh, pin bars. But those are just not uh, what I'm talking about in today's segment. I want to talk about why I took this trade. Now, the coolest one, in my opinion, is the RSI divergence and the pullback zone. The pullback zone is basically just looking for uh, areas of potential bullishness in a strong uptrend. So you can see it's kind of highlighted this whole area here as pullback zones. And you can see they've held up pretty nicely uh, throughout this uptrend, which is again why EURUSD was one of my absolute favorite pairs here uh, or in 2020 going into 2021 even. So I took a long position and we'll see if this one ends up being a profit or not. I'm not here to you know say, oh, the Euro dollar is going to the moon. I do think that it does have some bullishness here just due to the technical factors. And that's also what I wanna show you on the signals tab. Check this out. So the signals tab uh, right now is still in its early form. I'm sure ver uh, version two or version three will probably look a lot better on this tab. Uh, but what you'll notice is that it's giving us a couple different technical readings on uh, the, the current chart and giving us an idea of the overall signal. You can see down in the left, that's not the left, Nick, that's the right. Down in the right, my fault, uh, there's a buy rating of three. Now this buy rating and sell rating goes from negative five to positive five. A positive five is an incredibly strong bull, uh, bullish signal, meaning that all of these things are aligning bullishly. And then the negative five is the opposite, right? All of them are agreeing negative uh, or bearish uh, thesis. Now, with that said, the reason that I bring that up is that a three is actually still pretty solidly bullish uh, because what that means is that we go over here again, we've got an RSI that is not necessarily oversold, but it is on the lower half, right? We've got a trend straight, a state of a strong bullish trend, right? That's basically looking at all the MAs and saying, okay, how strong is the, the overall trend? Gives us a strong bullish reading on the trend here on the daily chart. We've also got the uh, pullback reading saying that we are currently in a bullish pullback zone, which we can see, of course, as we have the indicator actually turned on as well, telling us that we're generally in a pullback area where pullbacks might make sense to look at. So that's exactly what we are currently looking at right now. Um, so that, that again, is another bullish sentiment there. Uh, price action reading. 
uh, bullish op pullback opportunity, just again looking at the overall market structure here. Um, and then we've got retail sentiment. Now this is not necessarily ready and I'm hoping to see if we can get it in version two. I'm not even sure if it's going to be able to. Um, that might push the limits of my, my coding ability, but uh, we will see. So no promises on that. Uh, the 200 SMA is bullish and the overall rating gets a three. So that is partially why I took this position here to uh, basically, based on the technical factors that we've got, uh, a nice little bullish uptrend. Now I've also got some pretty key support levels. Uh, generally here you can see we've got consolidation on the uh, the daily chart here. So what we'll see here looking at your USD is that we shot up really strong right we did trend really higher but but there was this noticeable area of congestion right and that's where uh, I wanted to get in on a pullback and we've got the pullback zone so that's kind of like a double uh, a double whammy or a confluence of my different technical factors telling me that the overall market looks bullish now on top of this I do have a fundamental bias as well right as I've mentioned for some time uh, I am generally bearish on the US dollar at this time so with that said, combining that with uh, the technicals, um, you know, that gives me kind of a reason to go long here. Now, the other thing to say about that is that uh, fundamentally, the U.S. dollar, the reason I believe it to be to be weak and to continue to be weak is that the Fed is still printing a lot of money uh, as well as people are taking their money and putting it into other investments, right? People are, and I've said this a couple of times recently, so I'll just keep it brief, but generally people are taking their money and they don't wanna keep it in cash. They wanna go invest it in other places because the market is coming back. We're returning our you know, economy is, is the wheels are getting going again and people are starting to reinvest their money in uh, places that are actually going to, to yield something, especially with people receiving those stimulus checks in the United States and putting their money, and I'm sure stimulus around the world, different places have different policies policies and that sort of stuff. But generally, that money is being put out to the public. The public is, of course, some of them need it directly for rent or, or paying off whatever. Uh, and then other people have it as somewhat of an excess and they're able to go invest it in the, the markets or, you know, whatever they decide to invest it in. So generally speaking, I view this as a pullback opportunity. We'll see if I'm correct or not. It's basically flat right now. I'm looking for an overall continuation uh, of the Euro USD uptrend. I'm just going with the trend here, not trying to reinvent the wheel or anything like that. Uh, and again, the pullback scanner and the, the, uh, the signals tab here has been helpful. I think I'm gonna make this highlight. I think it'd be cool to change the color of which tab you're on based on uh, sorry guys, you guys are just <laughs> you're just hearing me in my uh, my developing mode. I've been kind of stuck in my my programming ways for the last few uh, days. Uh, also, one thing I want to say about the stop loss here is that you'll notice that it's not necessarily way below structure here. And the reason I have it in kind of the middle of this zone is that if price doesn't hold this area pretty strongly, right? Uh, if it doesn't jump right off of this previous resistance, previous congestion zone then I really don't want to be in the trade for much longer. Uh, so I actually ended up putting my stop kind of just below on the lower time frames, some of the structure there, and just going with uh, a little bit less of a stop loss distance, trying to see if I can optimize, uh, just kind of jumping in on this pullback, looking for the continuation. If it's not there, just get out of it quickly. Um, and that's something that a lot of traders, I think, struggle with is they don't let their losses be small. They, you know, they buy something like this. And let's say I am wrong. Let's say that the market does tank, right? They'll hold it and hold it and hold it. And what else will they do? They'll add more, they'll buy more, they'll buy more, they'll buy more. And if they're not careful, it can end in one giant loss. And if this has ever been you, I hope that you you find other strategies or concepts that make more sense because I do believe that there are some. Um, using using stops to to limit the, the downside of your trades is a huge advantage in my opinion because it gives us the chance to say, okay, well, we might get whipped out sometimes. We may just have a bad entry. Sometimes that's gonna stink, but at least we're not going to let a trade become a ginormous disaster by buying and buying and buying as it goes down and hoping that it will return because that's not a strategy. In fact, I've got a quote on my Instagram that, well, I didn't, uh, our, our editors made a really funny joke out of something I said in the video. They was like, um, hope is not a trading strategy. And they put like a, 
uh, go see it on my Instagram. It's, it's not funny when I tell it, but it's funny on my Instagram, I think. So check it out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and subscribe to the channel. If you are not already, there's that, uh, there's that capability on YouTube that if you subscribe to certain channels, they're start, they'll start promoting more content to you, uh, that is relevant to you. So if you want to see more trading content, that's pretty much what I do here on YouTube. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day and see you next time.